In this episode, we're going solar. Not totally, just as a supplement charge for our secondary battery that powers our fridge in the back of the Forerunner. We'll explain why we chose the panel we did, all the details about it, and give it a real world test. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. Get the there. Let me see it. No, get your own. I want to see No, get the own. Our needs are pretty simple. All we have really is a 75 quart fridge freezer to power. Um, we have batteries to charge up for the cameras, phones. Um, we have a water pump to power and a CPAP device at night. That's what our secondary battery system is designed to take care of. During the day when we're driving, the alternator does a perfect job of powering everything and keeping the second battery topped off. What we need is some supplemental charging for the hours when we're in camp between turning the engine off and nightfall. So what panel do we need? This was our first hurdle we had to jump. We like the idea of a fixed panel. It's already there, all wired up, no having to take it out, put it away, anything like that. But for our application, they just aren't practical. And here's why. The only time we'll need it is in camp. While we're driving, the Forerunner's charging system provides plenty of power. When camped, we prefer to park in the shade, and that won't do us much good for gathering sunlight. We don't like the idea of having a fixed panel exposed to the harsh weather all the time, like hail, uh, tree branches falling on it. And we tend to get ourselves into some tight spots, Damage to anything that's mounted on the roof is likely, if not inevitable. Portables, in general, are much lighter. And then there's flexible versus rigid, monocrystalline versus polycrystalline, just one panel or two panels hooked together, and of course, cost. Now you can go on YouTube and see the comparisons between the quality units and the cheaper panels. Some of the cheaper ones put out some decent power. A few even equal to the more pricey ones. But how long will they last? And if or when they fail, will a seller stand behind them? As usual, everything has its pros and cons. We went into the selection process thinking, solar is solar, right? How hard of a decision could it be? Oh my gosh, there are so many choices. And the price range is a mile wide. We found ourselves becoming victims of research overload. So we started asking around for recommendations on Facebook groups, uh, forums, and from our friends at Overland Power Solutions. During our research, one panel in particular kept coming up as highly recommended over and over, the Bug Out 120 from Overland Solar. So we looked into that one much, much closer and we found that that one was most likely to fulfill all our needs and expectations. So again, we got in touch with our friends at Overland Power Solutions and got one on order, along with a simple wiring harness to hook it up to our secondary battery. Well, here it is. Uh, overall, it measures about 57 inches, not including this flap by 21. These are SunPower Generation 3 solar cells. During our research, we learned that these are most likely the most efficient solar cells available. They produce seven to 10 amps per hour with a 23.7 solar cell efficiency. Now that is well above average. There are grommets and D-rings all along the edges, so you could either hang it on something, uh, tie it down to the roof rack, or just be able to prop it up for a better angle at the sun. The output has an SAE plug on it. These are really easy to find. That makes it simple to either buy an extension cord or make one yourself. One of the best features of this panel is it's made in the USA with 90% of its materials sourced from the US. The backing material is this nice, thick, durable cloth, and then there's a, a wide strip of Velcro to hold it all closed. 
Now this folds up really nice and tight, easily stored, and there's little or no chance of it bending too much and harming those solar cells. So far, we think we've made the right choice. On to hooking it up. Yay! The sun is out finally. Perfect for a solar panel episode, huh? There's no just hooking the panel directly up to the battery. It has to go through some type of solar controller unit. When we put our dual battery system in, we knew that solar was going to be in our future, so we planned to head for it. Our Red Arc DC to DC charger that we got from Overland Power Solutions has a solar controller built in. All we have to do is hook the negative from the panel to the negative and the positive up to this yellow wire that comes out of the charger. Then we ran the wires over from our battery to a standard SAE plug right here by the windshield. This rubber molding piece is extremely easy to just pop out and drill a hole through it. We backed it up with a thin piece of sheet metal to make this connection really nice and solid. The best thing, there's no drilling through the firewall or the body. You might be asking yourself, why did they mount it right here? The answer, visibility. We can see ourselves early morning, taking off from camp, a few minutes later looking in the mirror and seeing our panel flopping around behind us. Being here with the wire draped over the mirror greatly lessens the chance of that happening. And now, on to the testing phase. Now for the last couple of weeks, we have been using the heck out of this thing in a wide range of conditions. We were hoping to get back to you with a consistent number. This is how much it puts out. This is how much we use. What we've learned is there are so many variables that affect the panel's performance and the load. Our load when we're parked and the engine's off is pretty much just our fridge. And that varies greatly depending on air temperature, how full it is, if we're using half of it as a freezer, and how much we're opening it and getting into it. The panel is totally affected by the angle of the sun in the sky, the output is much greater when the sun is right above us. The angle of the panel to the sun, straight on is best. Up a little more, more t this way, with your right hand up and then out. Perfect, and just stay right there. Cloud cover and haze has a pretty major effect. Even how clean the panel surface is, dust is a major sunblock. The best we got out of our panel was 95 watts, and that's not bad for one that's rated at 120. The sun was at its highest, the panel was pointed right directly towards it, and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. At this rate, there was enough power to keep our big ass fridge at 36 degrees, and enough left over to charge our battery back up after a hard night's use. Unfortunately, here in the Midwest, we only get perfect conditions maybe 50% of the time. And a lot of our travels take us deep into heavily forested areas, so shade is a major factor. But still, even under cloudy skies and partial shade, we're still able to get an honest 25, 35 watts out of it. Plenty to power the fridge all day, but with less power to charge the battery back up with. Our conclusion? The Bug Out 120 is more than enough solar for our needs. Like we said at the beginning of the video, all we need is a solar panel that will provide enough juice to keep our battery at full charge from the time that we make camp, shut the engine off, until nightfall. The Bug Out 120 does that perfectly. Best advice we can give you is if you're unsure of how much power you need out of a solar panel, contact our friends at Overland Power Solutions. They can walk you through it and tell you exactly what you need. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook.